Hello everyone. This video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 9.2.2.5, Configuring Dynamic NAT. This Packet Tracer Assignment is a part of the Cisco RNS Routing and Switching Essentials Version 6 Network Academy Curriculum. Now, in this particular lab assignment, we are configuring dynamic NAT, so that means we're going to do like a pool of addresses. Hopefully, you've already completed the previous lab, which is configuring static NAT. Static NAT was mapping one address privately or inside to one address that's public or global outside uh, advertised. <laughs> So this time we have maybe multiple devices that we want to be able to translate from inside our private network to an outside address. All right. So we're going to have several uh, outside addresses that it's going to map to. OK, um, now don't get this confused with NAT overload. NAT overload is when you just have one address but you're mapping a whole lot of inside addresses to it we're actually going to have a pool of outside addresses that different inside devices are going to map to so we'll kind of see how that goes as we go along um, there are a couple of steps that you have again last time we kind of identified what was our inside and outside so we're going to kind of do that again so pretty much when we draw a box all of this is going to be our inside. So let's label that. Everything inside this box is our inside or our private network. So this is what's going to be inside, not publicly advertised. Everything on this side is our outside uh, or our public addresses okay so everything to the right of r2 is public or outside everything to the left of r2 is inside or private that'll be important when we get to our last step where we're telling r2 what is inside and what's outside because it has to know that all right so the first thing we do is we are going to configure an acl so we have to to set up this uh pool of addresses we have to know what network addresses, what private addresses have the ability to access this pool. Okay, so it's kind of like an access control list. So it tells you to configure one statement for ACL to permit any address belonging to 172.16.0.0 slash 16. Now, if you look, we've got three different 172.16 networks, dot one, dot 11, and dot 10. This one, if you remember back to subnetting, actually steps back one uh, octet and kind of covers everything. So this kind of covers everything from 172.16.0.0 to 172.16.255.255. So it actually covers a lot of addresses even beyond this, but that's kind of like a summary address. So we're going to go to config T, and this calls back also our um, skills from Chapter 7 in this particular class so we'll do access list and we only need a standard one um, and we'll do a number because they say ACL one um, because we only want to, we only care about where the traffic is coming from what networks can access this uh, NAT list or NAT pools I'm gonna set up in a minute so access list one and what is our source address um, well first we got to permit what is our source? 172.16.0.0. Now remember with our wildcard also, okay, we need a wildcard for ACLs. So right now my subnet mask is uh, 255, or sorry, for a slash 16, it's 255.255.0.0. Okay, now if we want to create a wildcard mask with that information we have to take and put two five fives above each one of these let me space this out a little bit and you're going to subtract so in the end you get zero dot zero dot 255.255. So this is your wildcard mask 0.0.255.255 for a slash 16. So that's what we're going to put here. 
0.0.255.255. So that's going to allow and permit all three of these different networks, because remember, all this is inside. So all these addresses before it leaves R2 have to be translated to a public address. So each one of these devices are going to get a different public address or request one from R2 as the traffic goes out. And then when it comes back in, it's going to be destined for that public address that one of these has. And then it's going to uh, be translated. So it's almost like DHCP. Remember with DHCP, we had that first come, first serve. So if L1 up here decides, hey, I need a public address and I want to communicate, it's going to get assigned one from R2 first. And then it's going to have in its uh, NAT translations, you'll see it'll be assigned an address in that pool. And then PC1, if it's the next one to request one, then it'll get one, PC2, and so on. But you have to have enough addresses in your NAT pool for all of your devices. You have to think about that with regular dynamic NAT, okay? Uh, next, we're going to configure that pool. So let us uh, configure that. So it's IP NAT pool, all right? And you see, we're just gonna name it. I'm gonna just name mine R2 NAT pool. Doesn't really matter what you name it. Oops. All right, now we're going to do the start. Now it says the start should be 209.165.76.196. And it says to use all four addresses in this addressing space. So that's the start. That's the network address. And a slash 30 means it goes up four addresses, including the first one. So you got 196. Dot 197, dot 198, and dot 199. So the end or the high address, because that's what it's asking here, it says the end address will be 209.165.76.199. So 196, 197, 198, and 199. A slash 30 address or a 252 subnet mask is what that uh, encompasses. Now remember, the first one here is the network address. The last one is the broadcast address. Can we use those if you think back to subnetting to assign to a device? No, they're not usable IP addresses. The only usable ones in a slash 30 will be the two in the middle, which is dot 197 and dot 198. Okay, that'll become important in a minute. So now let's look. Uh, the next part, it wants us to do the word net mask and then your network mask. So you can just do 255.255.255.252 will be your subnet mask for slash 30. Okay, so how many addresses are we going to have in our pool that are usable that can be assigned to a device as a public address? Only two, 197 and 198. Okay, now that's why they asked you this question. Notice in this apology there are three network ranges or even three devices here that need to be translated based on our ACL creation. What will happen if more than two devices attempt to access the internet? So let's say L1 will get a usable address, right, 197. Then PC1 will get a usable address, 198. Well, that's all the ones I have. PC2 will not be able to talk outside of this pool or outside of the Internet because it cannot get outside to get a public address, okay? So there's only going to be two devices at a time that can get a, a, a public address to be translated for their private address. They will not use their private address once you have that set up, okay? So we kind of run into an issue there. We don't have enough addresses, but that's intentional to kind of show you uh, that going forward. Now, let's bind these two together. So you got to bind the access list, control list that we set up with the IP NAT pool. To bind them together, you do IP NAT inside source, and then you see it has list instead of static like we did in the first lab. So list, and then we'll do R2, NAT pool, okay, Ooh. all right, and then, all right, and I'm sorry, we need to do our access list number here first, which is one, then we're going to do pool, then we're going to do R2 NAT pool, okay, we don't need to do overload. That's if you had port address translation running. We don't have that running in this particular lab. So it's IP NAT inside source list one, okay, our access control list. What pool are we binding that to? The R2 NAT pool. So only, again, those addresses 
from or those computers from the 172.16.0.0 networks, which happen to be all three, because that's a summary address, can access our NAT pool. And we only got two addresses to give out, and that's dot one ninety seven and dot one ninety eight. Okay. All right, now it says configure the NAT interfaces. That means what side of R2 is the inside, what side of the R2 is the outside. We already kind of did that on our topology, so now we just got to go into the interfaces. To the right, S000 happens to be the outside, so we'll go interface S000, IP NAT outside, and then S001 happens to be the inside, so IP NAT inside. All right. So now that we've got that completed, let's try out our translation. So we're going to, uh, it says from a web browser of L1, PC1, or PC2, access the web page for server one. All right. So let's try that. So we'll do 209.165.201.5. Hit enter. See, it says welcome to server one. We did that from L1. Now let's do it from PC2. Let's skip PC1. So now let's do 209.165.201.5. Hit enter. It says welcome to server one. Now let's go to R2 and look at our translations. So exit and we'll do um, show IP NAT translations. And you see that we've got. It started assigning, right? 197. Why this out a little bit? 197, right? And 198. And my inside addresses are 11.1. That's the laptop up there, and 10.2. That's the PC1 down here. Well, let's see if we do this from PC1. What'll happen? Desktop command prompt 209.165.201.5. You hit enter, and nothing's happening. Now, why is that? Well. We have already taken up our two addresses that we said in our range because it spanned again. Uh, we had available 209.165.76.96. That was our network address. Then we had 97, 98. 99. Okay, and that's based off of we know it's a slash 30 or 255.255.255.252 subnet mask. Now, remember, this one cannot be used because it's the network address, and this one cannot be used because it's a broadcast address. So only that leaves two. That these have been assigned out to these two devices that you can see here in my diagram. So we don't have any. It is full all are taken all right so because of that we don't have any more addresses we'd have to clear out the table and then start over if pc1 wanted to talk okay so you see we have to have enough addresses in our pool that's where the dangerous part comes in that's also where port address translation is an important part of this because it'll take one address and map it to the specific port number. A lot of people use port address translation on their home wireless router and probably don't even know it. So, uh, because you only usually get one address from your internet service provider. Okay, so again, that completes configuring dynamic NAT. Remember the four steps are configuring your ACL for what addresses or what networks do you wanna be able to um, access the pool. You gotta set up the NAT pool with the available addresses from high to low, from from the start to the end then you need to bind them together so they can access it and then you need to put your inside and outside for the interfaces all right so that completes our uh configuring dynamic nat lab